We're here at the Dynasty restaurant in Hopkinton to take some time and have a conversation with Sarah Duckett, the editor of the Hopkinton Independent newspaper today. So why don't you pull a chair up to the table and join us here this afternoon. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for meeting today in the midst of a really cold uh, onset of winter, January 2016, and we're here at the Dynasty restaurant in Hopkinton. So mm, why don't we start by talking about why we're here at Dynasty? <laughs> well, you asked me if I would like to go to one of my favorite places mm -hmm. to do this, and not wanting to subject you to my dog at home, <laughs> um, I decided that this would be a nice quiet spot to do it, and I talked to Rosie, and she said it was fine. Mm -hmm. So here we are, ensconced in the back room, Yes. where no one can find us. It is, and it's a very nice place to meet on a day like this. So good idea, thank you. So we're here to get to know a little bit more about you uh, than the name that we see on the Hopkinton Independent, um, but maybe we can start there. Uh, it's a very famous paper in our town. Every resident receives yes. in the mail. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this is your creation. Um, you got it started how many years ago now? Um, 16. We're starting our 17th year. Uh -huh. Well, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And it really is an important resource in our town uh, that offers a lot of important information uh, in many ways. And I wonder if you can just tell a little of the story of how you got involved in creating this. Um, okay, we'll go back about 18 years mm -hmm. and the um, we had uh, previously had a town paper mm -hmm. that had begun by the women's club. And then it was taken over by Bentley Print Pro Productions in um, Sudbury. Mm -hmm. And they put out the Hopkinton Crier at that point as our local town paper. Mm -hmm. At which, well, I don't know, they were there for a couple years. And then community newspapers bought them up. And then the crier, at, as we had known it and loved it, was no longer. Mm -hmm. So there would be uh, people bumping into me at Colella's and we're all talking about why there isn't any paper anymore in town that does anything for us. And, um, I got together a very small group of people, um, Perry Fitzpatrick, mm -hmm. um, who was really a, a journalist mm -hmm. who worked in New, New Jersey and New York pay newspapers. Um, and Rob Phipps, who basically figuratively kicked me in the ass and said, if anyone can do this, Sarah, you can. Mm -hmm. And I put together, at that point, it was uh, these long 11 by 17 sheets of paper. I put something together. I went to the Chamber of Commerce, which in those days was very small. I think there were only five of us there. Uh -huh. But Hank Fredette was there and Jimmy Pine. And they both liked the idea. They both said they would support me. Mm -hmm. uh, Jimmy would take some ads. And I um, met with Al Holman, who runs the Menden Upton Crier. And also now the, there's a Milford cry, Town Crier from him. Mm -hmm. And he kind of gave me the nuts and bolts of how you physically put all this together. Hmm. Uh, he got me started with my first printer, which was Saltus Press in Worcester. In those days, um, I had to physically take out a floppy disk and uh, the 11 by 17 pages mm -hmm. and go out there every two weeks. Wow. And they would take what they could off the disc and they would photograph the pages. Uh, this was, as you could tell, a really long time ago in terms of journalism and print. Yeah. Um, after I had been there for, I want to say 10 years, they celebrated their 100th anniversary and shortly after that went out of business. <laughs> <laughs> so I got a new printer, it's uh, Graphic Developments yeah. down in Hanover, Mass. Um, they have been wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, 
the paper has now changed so dramatically that I, I literally send it to them via computer. Mm. Um, they just take it right from there and it goes to the, to, to the photos and it just, the changes have just been so enormous. And I check in with, I send it on Sunday night, I check in with them on Monday morning to make sure I haven't screwed anything up. Mm -hmm. And most of the time they tell me I'm fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I have screwed something up, they are able to fix it for that's me. Great. And they are, I've, I feel a very close relationship with them. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are. We're starting our 17th year. Wow. Well, that's quite a long time. And uh, as I said, I know that the power has, the paper has its own uh, important presence in our town. And I, I imagine so. it's a great deal of work over the past number of years. I wonder if you have one uh, memorable story of covering something that happened in our town or something that stands out as an interesting moment in covering news for Hopkinton. One with this moment. Paper. Is it all right? Is I can think of a lot of them. <laughs> well, no, one one well, maybe you should write a book. But <laughs> we'll put that in an assignment for you. I was also wondering, I, I know that there, I mean, just from your saying this summary, great deal of work. And it's quite amazing that this, uh, hearing the beginning of it, that it started with the seeds of talking at Colella's or wherever about we have no paper, what yeah. happened, and then you lighting the fire to get that going. And that takes a lot of um, energy as well as uh, creati creativity and innovation to get it started. And, uh, well, a I'm, lot of different things. I um, wouldn't say I'm a very creative person, but... Um, well, to get it I going. Had, I had a, a lot of impetus. I really yes. did. My family was extremely supportive. Yeah. I had never touched a computer before I started this. Mm. And I would sit there constantly going, Amy, Mark, help. Brendan, <laughs> help. <laughs> uh -huh. And they got me through a lot of it. Kathy Peachy, who used to live in town, was instrumental in um, helping me get started as well. Mm. So help is important. With help, a oh yes, this, like this, this is absolutely, well. this has yeah, always yeah. been a, a large, mm -hmm. um, grouping of mostly family at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mark and I would drive around and make sure we had all the addresses of all the businesses because they had to get papers. Mm -hmm. um, I had to send all these addresses in. I, it, was, it was, at the beginning I did everything. Yeah. Now I have, I've been so fortunate to have um, just creative, wonderful staff people mm -hmm. who have all sort of bought into the philosophy of the paper. Mm -hmm which is we're doing this for the town. Right, yeah. And I've had a few people come through who didn't quite see it that way and mm -hmm. they were asked to leave. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's this feeling that for the town we want to mm. keep doing it for them. Well, that's an important message to know in learning about this paper. And given that it has likely taken a great deal of your time and energy blood, sweat, and tears, all of that. I'm also curious how you would say over the span of this time, you would say it has enriched you personally also in... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sort of a person who likes to go in and see a need, take care of it, and leave. Mm -hmm. And that's how I have always operated and what's so wonderful about the newspaper is that it's always different. Mm. Each yeah. issue is always different. Mm -hmm. There are always new stories, new angles. Um, so I've been able to keep at it this long. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, well, um, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll speak on behalf of our town. Thank um, you. What would you say you've learned about covering news yourself uh, as editor Things are a lot more complicated than anybody realizes, yeah. especially in this day and age of, uh, you know, sound bites and all. Mm -hmm. Things are much more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that's what we try to do. We try and get into the depth mm -hmm. um, of stories. And we can do that because we come out every two weeks. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have the time to do that. Um, Michelle Murdoch mm -hmm. is just incredible mm -hmm. at, at the sort of work that she puts into delving into various things going on. Mm -hmm. So um, I am very blessed to have her yes. and uh, all of the others. They all have sort of their little niches mm -hmm. that they like to do and like to work on. And um, it's, it's just worked out really well. We've lost people. We brought new people in. A lot of it's been uh, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe it's like I a family. We, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. We're very much. In fact, that's the that's the first rule of the newspaper is family first. Mm -hmm. And ah. the second rule is to have fun. Oh, good. <laughs> so that's good um, to hear. I um, think they all do. <laughs> oh well. All right. Let's go back talking about family. Maybe to uh, your own beginnings. Uh, you didn't grow up in Hopkinton. You started in Newton, from what yeah. I understand. Yeah. And uh, you grew up with your family then. Um, what would you say that you enjoyed doing most as a child? Uh, were you a little scoop journalist child going around covering? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. I was uh, probably a just a, a little shy Newton kid mm -hmm. walking back and forth from Underwood School at lunchtime, and, mm -hmm. you know, hail to the chief with mm -hmm. Dwight Eisenhower's picture on the wall. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Big brother Bob Emery. <laughs> um, we moved to Chicago when I was 16. Mm. My father had left Arthur D. Little and went to work for Armour and Company. And then I went to college in California, hmm. one of the Claremont colleges. And um, you studied? I studied sociology. Sociology, okay. And history and religion as a minor. Wow. Um, That's a lot. You then I went into uh, graduate school at one of the UCs hmm. uh, for, for education, for teaching. All right. I moved back to uh, Massachusetts in 1970. I tried to get a teaching job that was not going to happen, uh, so I ended up working uh, at Motorola Communications. Um, in Boston? In Boston, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where I met Frank. And Frank is your husband? Frank is my husband of, of how many years? 39 years. 39 years, wow. We haven't killed each other yet. <laughs> All right, well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were living in uh, an apartment behind the um, prison in Framingham mm -hmm. when uh, things in the apartment complex got a little shady. So we started looking for a house mm -hmm. and uh, we went to a realtor who said basically we could not afford a house in any town that began with S or W. Oh, okay. So we ended up in towns that began with H, uh -huh. Holliston and Hopkinton. Mm. Uh, where we are, um, way back in 1976 was, um, well, still is, one of the old mill houses. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we loved about it was the placement on the property, mm. huge side yard, and backyard, and it had a pantry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I grew up with pantries. I always wanted a pantry. Yeah. So um, we bought it. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it still is our home after all this time. Mm. Uh, the kids were all there. We did put an addition on uh, when Frank's mother came down to live with us, uh, which was nice because now we had a bathroom upstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, but we love it. We're on a little, a little street that's, believe it or not, so close to the center of town, but so quiet. Mm -hmm. That's nice to have both. It is. Mm -hmm. It's so quiet. And uh, since we've been there so long, we've seen everything go right around in the big circle. When we were there, the kids were little. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And then they were all gone. And now the, the new families who have come in, their kids, well, they're not so little now. They're getting up to be, you know, 10, 11, 12. Mm -hmm. um, but it's... 
it's retained the wonderful neighborhood feeling. Mm -hmm. We have street parties. Everybody gets along with everybody. It's, it's still the great place it was when we moved in. Mm, that's good to hear. What would you say is one of the most important things uh, to you about the town of Hopkinton in living here for such a long time? Well, number one, I've been told repeatedly that I'm not a townie. All right. <laughs> My grandmother did not, was not buried here. <laughs> okay. But I sort of feel like I am because we've yeah. been here so long. Mm -hmm. And I've always felt it was an extended family mm -hmm. to us with all the people I knew, probably from working through town government mm -hmm. and working at Kalala's for three stints as a cashier. Mm -hmm. I worked with Margot Roman. Mm -hmm. at MASH for a while. With the animals? With okay. the animals, mm -hmm. yeah. I love animals. I've always had dogs. Mm -hmm. um, so I that. tried very hard to, after we adopted the kids, Mark and Amy, I tried very hard to make sure that I had part-time jobs yeah. so that I was always home for them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that worked out very well for them. We're very close, all of us now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you have three children. Three children. Mm -hmm. Brendan, who I suffered through to have born. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's uh, 35. He has two kids now, wow. two boys, six and almost four. Uh, Amy, who's going to be 33. She lives down south of, of here. She's mm -hmm. in Massachusetts. And Mark, um, who's 30, just received his master's degree from Hawaii Pacific University, which we got to watch him receive, mm -hmm. even from a long distance away. Uh -huh. And uh, he is now back in Korea, where he has taught English there for seven years, and he's starting his eighth year to save money so that he and his fiance, who is South Korean, can mm -hmm. get married. Wow, a lot of change over time. Absolutely. Uh -huh. And the importance of family comes through, as you're talking about, in different ways. The importance of Hopkinton to you in, in your work mm -hmm. on the newspaper and also with your own uh, family, now with grandchildren also, and uh, people in different parts of the world even. I know that, for the most part, you've been in Massachusetts with your family, but you had also mentioned spending some time in China. Yeah, uh, we, 1983-84, um, we went to China. We lived in Beijing. Drives me nuts when I listen to people on the news say Beijing. Mm -hmm. It's Beijing. Mm -hmm. Because you worked with language, <laughs> right, there. You were teaching. Well, I taught English to um, college students. Mm -hmm. and Kids who had been out of the educational system for 10 years because of the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and you learned a great deal about uh, yeah, them. Gratifying, gratifying experience. Mm -hmm. Learned about them. Some of them would talk about their years of the Cultural Revolution. Mm -hmm. Most would not. Mm -hmm. Because of their age, they were probably involved with the Red Guards. Mm -hmm. um, I used uh, newspapers sent to me from Frank's office mm -hmm. and my son's books and toys to try and show them relationships of before, after, yesterday, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, that sort of stuff. And they, um, their final exam, because I was told by Professor Tang that I had to give them a final exam. Mm -hmm. And I said, how do you give final exam to people who have been talking? So I had everybody prepare at least a two minute speech. Mm -hmm. And we recorded them. Mm -hmm. And after every recording, we would stop it and everybody would talk about what they heard mm -hmm. as to whether it <laughs> made sense, as to whether they were falling back into a Chinese expression called nega, dega, jega, um, which is sort of like um. All right. Mm -hmm. um, and that was when I got some of them to really talk about things that had happened came wow. out in those. I still have those tapes. Wow. wow. Of course, I don't know if I can ever find a tape recorder to play them on anymore, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because that was a different time of different recording, era. right? Yes. 
So uh, that must have been a really different and interesting kind of experience for your life. And I know you took that with you, and it was hard adjusting to it life. It was very back here. hard getting back here. It wasn't so hard adjusting there. Yeah. Um, you just learn to get along without so much. You don't mm. need all mm. the stuff that in this country we seem to think we have to have. Mm. Um, you said you were looking yeah. at the cereal. Yeah, back when we here. first came back, um, I went into Kalala's and uh, I walked into the cereal aisle, and this entire aisle is filled with boxes of all different kinds and brands and, and I just I couldn't handle it mm. I walked out I left I turned around and I left because over there we just went and got what we needed every day mm -hmm. there was a place across the street that we that we called Kmart <laughs> mm -hmm. which was just sort of an open-air concrete place um, and we would pick up what we wanted for dinner or we would go to one of the dining halls at the Oibing one. Um, the only time we ever bought real food, and we were very fortunate to have a refrigerator. Something we take for granted. Absolutely. The uh, monitoring center, the environmental monitoring center bought it for us. Wow. Snowflake refrigerators. Every month or so we would drive all the way over to San Tun where the Yoyi Shandi, the um, friendship store was, uh, near the um, diplomatic area. Mm -hmm. And we could buy frozen foods. Mm -hmm. And we would buy some hamburger or whatnot and bring it back and stick it in, the, in our, our freezer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was... Um, and you were fortunate. You were the fortunate oh, ones at oh, that time. Oh, absolutely. I had mm -hmm. other people that we met because this was a it was a compound that had been built by the Russians but it was uh, filled with what they called foreign experts. Mm -hmm. Frank was not a foreign expert because he was a business person but I was classified as a foreign expert because I taught English <laughs> and it huh. made no sense. Uh, but others who didn't have refrigerators would come over and hmm. say could you put this in your ice box for us? <laughs> uh, uh -huh. So okay. I would have to say Brendan, who was three at the time, had friends who were Chinese, mm -hmm. French, mm -hmm. German, Swiss, Australian. And they would all, these kids, would all go out and they developed their own language. Mm -hmm. So they could all talk to each other. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. So the IEs, are the nursemaids that yeah. oversaw all these kids, didn't have a clue what these kids were saying to each other. No. <laughs> Creative. <laughs> <laughs> but they uh, good friends. And we stayed close for years after we got back mm -hmm. with a lot of the people we met. Mm -hmm. Wow, that sounds like an eye-opening experience and, and rich in some ways and learning about a different part uh, of the world. And absolutely. Everything isn't just like it is here. Oh, no, I just, the, I would have to say that the largest thing I've learned, and, and I still believe it, we are so incredibly spoiled in this country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you look at the news, mm -hmm. you see what these people are going through. Mm -hmm. How can we not help? It's just so wrong of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. But having lived in a third world country, I see it through different eyes. Mm -hmm. My eyes have not changed. Mm -hmm. I know you had mentioned you have letters from that time. Yes, my family and friends have saved all the letters that I wrote back mm -hmm. from China. Yeah. Some were handwritten and some were on that really thin Rice Air mail paper. paper. It's almost like rice paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And others were typed. Mm -hmm. And I've always thought that I wanted to compile them into a book. Mm -hmm. And that would bring a little bit of what you saw through your eyes yeah. and learn to yeah. other readers. Yeah, to, to others. But actually, I, I'm really looking forward to reading them all again myself. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because there's so many small things you don't remember. Mm -hmm. And who knows, maybe it will become a book. 
maybe something for the new year. Well, even. it's only been 30 plus years, yeah. <laughs> you know, give me a little time. Well, it's never too late, <laughs> never too late. I know we only have a few more minutes and this has really passed uh, by quickly. Um, Anything that Hopkinton might not know yeah. about you other than what we've covered today? Any secret uh, hobbies or interests? I know you love reading. Uh, I love reading. I don't go anywhere without something to read. All right. Uh -huh. A book, a newspaper, something. Um, I've been like that since I was a little kid. Yeah, and that ties in with your work in a way. Um, well, in a way, yeah. I was never trained in journalism. That was yeah. all Perry. Fitzpatrick. Uh -huh. yeah. He really he gave me the AP guidebook and he said, This is what you do. Mm -hmm. We used to meet at his house until he passed. Um, and he would go through the papers with us and say, Okay, guys, you need to do this, this, this. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I've kept up with what he told us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the importance of reading um, and keeping informed oh, absolutely. of our stories as human beings uh, through the news and you we, read uh, other We try kinds. very, very hard to have what I would call hard news in the newspaper. Yeah. Um, thanks to Michelle, mm -hmm. she gets a lot of the, the real good stuff. But, you know, there's so many things going on in town today. The planning board, uh, all of the, the building, people need to know about what is happening and how it is going to impact their lives. Mm. Uh, that's what we try to do. And uh, I know that is what you have done over time and it is again much appreciated. Uh, we've come to the end of our interview. My last question for you is anything on your bucket list for this year? How's that before we end? Oh, well, I thought I might be going to Korea for Mark's wedding, but now that seems to be 2017. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, then maybe time to write a book. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. All right. I need to get that going. Letters. Thanks, mm -hmm. Cheryl. All right. <laughs> well, thank you, Sarah. It's been a fun and illuminating interview with you here at Dynasty today. So thank you very much, and Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. <laughs> thank you.